Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we want to talk about the, the strongest Yeti army in the game right now. And the reason why I'm doing this video, even though I guess everyone knows the Yeti Smash, but there's a stronger army variation out there. And which is surprising to me, not that many people are using it. This army is crazy. It's using the bats, it's using the kind of original um, combination of Yetis and bowlers. And just instead of a couple of jump spells and more rages, you're using the bad spell. Why exactly is this so powerful? Well, the reason behind that is kind of simple. As soon as you're climbing higher in trophies, you will see more and more single inferno towers. The reason again, well, the reason for that is there are so many, um, so many single inferno towers out there, which makes bats pretty strong. And ground expos are in addition to that. So this clan is doing insanely well with this uh, with this strategy because all of them are using it. For example, this guy is using the same army we're gonna use in this video. The only difference is I swapped out one loon for um, two more wall breakers and an archer because, I mean guys, you know my wall breaker skills, right? I need more wall breakers. I need more wall breakers to get open in one wall. And this is why I'm using, using six wall breakers instead of four, but that's totally up to you. Important is the spells and that's five bad spells. What I think what we should do is let's get started with the first attack. Now I will show you guys a couple of different things you have to keep in mind. And why exactly is this army composition so powerful? Well, there's one busted mechanic in the game right now, which is the Yeti blimp, which means every single army which uses the Yeti blimp is just basically, just because using of this blimp, it's on S plus tier, or like the, the best army in the game right now. So, this is something which you always have to keep in mind. You can choose, this is another important thing about this army, sometimes you can choose in between of the ram and sometimes the blimp, but 99% of the time the blimp is better and just super crazy powerful. But why exactly is this powerful? The reasoning behind that is you can send in the blimp at any time as soon as you push basically into the core of the base. And you can send the blimp in behind of your Yeti smash and this means since you're using healers, all of the black mines are already like taken out for the blimp, which means the blimp will reach the town hall like 100%. And the broken thing right now is that the Yeti blimp is taking out the town hall without needing a rage. And this is just stupid to me. Like this makes Yeti so much, so much like way too strong. But either way, we're talking now about this attack and what do you have to go for? Like you have the Yeti boulder kill squad basically, but what exactly is the main objective for you? First off, the town hall is always a nice objective to get, but if that's not possible, like I said, you have the Yeti Blimp. Another thing which you have to go for are Wizard Towers, multi infern Towers, if there are any, and then obviously the Scatter Shots. Like everything which is dealing splash damage is a main threat to you, because you will finish up with the bats, which is like the key in this attack strategy. So you can see we took out already both Scatter Shots, already um, four Wizard Towers, which is crazy, and now the Yeti blimp is on the town hall. The Yetis will clear out the town hall. Meanwhile, we have the bats coming in. We're freezing up the clan castle. We do not care about the clan castle at this point. If there would have been, a, I don't know, like ice golems or a lava hound in there, it wouldn't matter. In this case, what was like the worst possible CC, which is witches, because um, well, witches can deal splash damage and can get rid of your of your bats. And now just have your bats flying around, do their thing and basically wreck everything. So this army composition is just crazy, crazy nuts. And you can see this base is completely wrecked. We have a couple of wizards at the top side. That's the nice thing about this army. On Yeti Smash, I feel like you're kind of tending to have time felts kind of often. But on this one, you're having six cleanup wizards, which is crazy. So those cleanup wizards make sure that the time normally is never an issue. So uh, that's kind of nice to have, I have to admit it. Me as one of the time fight gods, I would, I would call me, um, it's nice to have a strategy which is really hard to time fill. But either way, this was the first attack I wanted to show you guys. I have obviously more attacks for you to show, so I think we should get into the next attack really soon. But like I said, this attack is crazy. Everything right now which is using the Yeti blimp as a key element in, his, in its attack, it's basically broken. So for example, if you're using Queen Judge Hybrid and you have the possibility of a Yeti Blimp, it's crazy. If you have Yeti Smash with the Yeti Blimp, it's crazy as well. And this is kind of the big difference right now in between of the 
kind of normal attacks and then like everything which is using Yeti Blimp. And I think that this is gonna change in the future because I think the Yeti Blimp is broken. But there, that's just me. Let's take a look at the next base. And once again, we want to take care of the splash damage. You can see at the bottom left, there are two wizard towers. At the bottom right, there's one wizard tower and then there are two wizard towers at the top. So what do we want to take out first? We want to take out first the two wizard towers at the top. And then we're just starting over there with our queen walk. Let the queen decide basically which way she's going. And on this base, we have good pathing into the town hall, which means as soon as you have good pathing to the town hall, you do not need the Yeti Bloom for the town hall. So at this point, I thought like, okay, I do not need the Yeti Bloom for the town hall. So let's think about what could we take out instead of the town hall. So what I'm doing over here, I will send in the blimp in a second for the single throne tower. What this does, it's basically pretty simple. What this does is my queen can walk to either side, like I don't care where she's going. Left side would have been better because of the wizard tower, but if she's going to the right, then she's going to the right. It doesn't really matter. So at this point, it feels like she's going to the right, but uh, queen is coming back to the left now, and I do not want to invest the uh, freeze. So I have to invest the queen ability, even though it's a bit sad. But yeah, I have to invest the queen ability just to make sure that she, she's staying alive. And I cannot invest at this point a free spell. That's just not possible. There are so many splash damage buildings on the back end. I had to save as many freezes as possible. And at this point I was considering, okay, I have to somehow get my war breakers in there, which means I had to freeze the scatter shot, which isn't the best thing to do, but I basically had to do it. So we have two more freezes alive. And this is the next thing. The Royal Champion. This is kind of key and this is the big difference back then uh, before the Tunnel 13 update that was like the P.E.K.K.A smash with the bats out there. But the big difference in between of this army and like the Tower 12 army basically is you have a Royal Champ which means at this point I have the scatter shot and I have the Wizard Tower at the bottom right but I just take out the Wizard Tower with my Royal Champ. I can save the Royal Champ wherever I want her, uh, her to go and this is what you can do with her. You can just basically uh, make sure that the splash damage is getting taken out by her. We took out the wizard tower at the right. The bats are coming in, still smashing everything. And like I said, there are so many threats to the bats. Multi front towers, X bows, wizard towers, scatter shots. But with considering how the current meta is with single front towers, with the X bows on ground, and a lot of other things which help kinda to make bats even stronger, it's pretty crazy. So if you guys are not facing too many multi front towers, this strategy is just, it's crazy. But let's take a look what exactly is happening if we are facing multi front towers, because it's not that common, but still it's out there. Some people are using multi front towers. So what exactly are we doing? How to defend that and or like how to beat that more like, and uh, I think we should take a look at that. What we're doing this is, or what we're doing with this is we're using this army composition as well on one of my lower accounts, which means it's not max heroes and it's not max bowlers, which means the damage dealers are not max and the army composition, which is kind of huge. So what we're doing on this one, this base has three multi inferno towers, which normally is pretty bad. This base as well has a lot of air bows, which is even worse, which means like everything which could go wrong is going wrong for me in the base preparation. So you guys might, might say, okay, this army is kind of luck dependent if you're getting multi inferno towers or not. I'm just saying just deal with it and triple the base either way. That's way easier. So what we're doing on this one, we're doing a one walk for one of the inferno towers. And then we have the Royal Champion for the next inferno tower basically. And then we're pushing for the wizard towers in the core with our main push. That's kind of the idea. So what we're doing on this, taking care of the, um, of the inferno tower. And I have to admit, I don't know whether the blimp was the best choice here because I will use the blimp in a second. But I think the ram might have been better. But either way, now we have to push. Everything is getting to the core. First rage. And I think now a ram to the core would have been better. But what I'm doing instead, I'm using the blimp now to get basically the core out of the way. But I feel like with the ram opening up everything, this might have worked better. But either way, since I showed you, showed you guys the attack, it's gonna be a triple anyway, right? So let's take a look at what exactly is happening. A lot of boulders or a lot of yetis are like getting flinked away from spring traps. Now on the right side, like I said, we're using the Royal Champ to take care of the motor inferno tower. We're freezing the wizard tower and the archer tower, which is set to like faster speed, basically, like the, the gear up. 
Uh, then we're using a couple of runes to take out the next wizard tower on the outside, then freezing again the scatter shot. And this is actually not looking too bad, to be honest. So we have a couple of more bats coming in, helping with the Royal Champ to get through the back end. We have our Royal Champ ability now. Bats are clearing out the expo. Like I said, this base was the worst case. We had non max troops on our end, we had max defense on the other side, and we have. Air Expos, we have multi inferno Towers, which means it's everything, basically the worst thing which could happen. So on this one, this is getting close, I have to admit it. But still, we have the Queen ability, we have tons of healers still left, we have the Warden still alive, we have a couple of more Warbreakers, which, which we couldn't use to Warbreak into the last inferno Tower compartment. And that's not looking too bad, right? So King is going for, the, for my own Warden, which is a bit unfortunate, because he's normally like a nice damage so source. But uh, yeah, my queen will finish, her, uh, finish the king, and this means we will support the queen ability with the wall breakers. What does this mean? If I use the queen ability, they're getting uh, uh, archers spawned, which means if we can tie the queen ability and the wall breakers together, this means a couple of wall breakers should hit the wall, since they have like the archers which are getting spawned and the wall breakers. So everything is getting open up. This is going to be a triple. Last defense is down, and this is how you can use this strategy. I hope I, guy, I hope I could help you guys with this strategy. Try it on your own. Like I said, it's pretty strong. And especially with the Yeti Blim, it's just busted. As soon as using army with the Yeti Blim together, it's just broken, to be honest, sadly. And I hope in the next update it's getting addressed. Because the Yeti Blim right now, it's crazy. It's dominating everything. And with nerfing the Yeti Blim, it would be a nice nerf for the Queen Judge Hybrid and for the, Queen, uh, and for the Yeti Smash in general, which is right now the two strongest armies in the game. So either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys back tomorrow. And until then, see you guys and bye bye.